Hi, my name is Pear. Whoa, that's loud. And I'm a socialist. Whatever you think that means, I hope you'll see tonight that socialism is more than just one idea, but a diverse, evolving project that's deeply democratic, and it might involve you too. <clears throat> a, uh, a recent, oh, I said that too fast. There we go. A recent Harvard study found that 51% of US millennials do not support capitalism, whatever that means. It is not surprising, uh, though, that because most young people face mountains of debt and insecure futures, and our old ways are propelling us into climate change. There's also a greater awareness of wealth inequality today, and it seems like money dominates our political process. A very startling Princeton study found recently what many of us have suspected, quote, that public opinion has a near zero impact on US law. Uh, these graphs really shook uh, up my political consciousness after the last recession. The bottom one shows what most American thinks is a fair distribution of wealth. The top is the reality. <clears throat> so Bernie Sanders is part of this story. He is on the forefront of trying to repair election finance and he wants to guarantee certain public goods like education and universal health care, scary stuff. But socialism is not the same as state programs. Also, the movement supporting Sanders did not emerge out of a vacuum. It arises out of movements like Occupy, Fight for $15 an Hour, the Chicago's teacher, Chicago Teachers Union strike, and climate justice groups, just to name a few. These people-powered approaches to politics uh, is a deeply socialist theories of change. Uh, today, economic decisions are made by a tiny number of people, the fabulously wealthy shareholders for whom the profit-seeking machinery of capitalism turns. They, above all, influence how stuff gets made, what workers get paid, what we do to the planet in the process. For your consideration, the crime of capitalism is that it forces the vast majority of the population to remain preoccupied, with basic concerns of nutrition, housing, health, skill acquisition, it leaves a, a little time for fostering community and creativity that humans crave. Socialists hold the radically democratic belief that what touches all should be decided by all. We want to make our way to an economic system beholden to the will of the people and one that values human needs, human communities, and the irreplaceable natural systems that support us. Uh, one such approach is the solidarity economy. This generally revolves around uh, rooting our economic ac activity in principles of solidarity, participation, cooperation, reciprocity, instead of competition, manipulation, extraction, and individualism. Furthermore, this is not a top-down process. As Brazilian activist uh, Marcos Arruda put it, a solidarity economy does not arise from, arise from thinkers or ideas from the top. It is the outcome of the concrete historical struggle of the human being to live and to develop him or herself as an individual and collective. Uh, one example is worker-owned cooperatives like the Evergreen Cooperative in Cleveland. It's a collection of businesses that are owned and operated by the workers and nobody else. The result, they don't outsource jobs, they pay well, and they don't wreck their own environments. <clears throat> in these alternative arrangements, it's not just about work and the income. It changes the way people see themselves and each other and their communities. They are models of empowerment, and they allow opportunities to practice real democracy on a daily basis. Another idea you might have heard of is the commons, or the verb form, commoning. This is about keeping resources outside of the market, and they are owned by a community that takes up the direct stewardship and decision-making about it. So some familiar examples include air, water, community gardens. You may have seen those little free libraries everywhere. Wikipedia, even sharing tools with your neighbor is a sort of commons. Commoning represents a shift from you're on your own to we're in this together. A community can take charge, sometimes working with the government, sometimes bypassing it completely. 
For example, in Hawaii, a surfing community called Wolfpack formed a social collective around a very popular, very dangerous surf spot. The people themselves actually enforce a self-governing set of rules that helps people stay safe and ensures equal access to those sweet waves. Uh, one major movement within the commons is energy democracy. The end of the fossil fuel era is nearing, and it creates a huge opportunity for communities to take charge of their own energy future by taking control and establishing localized, community-owned, clean energy. In California, a model, a model already exists for taking power over our power. It's called community choice aggregation. A 2002 law allows communities to effectively decide what sources to purchase power from. They just have to organize. There are over 70 projects like this in California already underway. Uh, where's my last page? <laughs> so we've, uh, we're running out of time here, and we've barely scratched the surface. What about sexism and racism? Don't socialists only care about class? Doesn't socialism lead to tyranny? Doesn't human nature make socialism impossible? Will socialists take my fancy car and my Kenny Loggins records? If you're interested in any of these questions, uh, consider joining our reading group uh, where we uh, discuss issues like this on a regular basis. We or organize and connect with local activists. And uh, please feel free to come up and speak with me if uh, you're interested. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs>